teacher at Ypsilanti Community High School in the AC Tech um, division. Like most teachers, one of the first things you do when school starts is you try to get to know your students. So I'm asking them, who are you? Telling them a little bit about who I am. Telling them that I'm new to Ypsilanti, I don't know anything about this city, tell me about this city. Um, first things I got were, in general, were EMU is here. Okay. We have a water tower. Okay. I also got the student name for the water tower. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and I said, well, well, what else? And it's like, well, what are neighborhoods like? Okay. Oh, they got some nice neighborhoods, and we got some not so nice neighborhoods. All right, so what is the history? Give me something about the history. Well, now keep in mind that this is like a, at least a 90% African American population in this high school. So give me some history. Somebody said from out of the corner somewhere, well, there's no really history here as it relates to us. There's no really history here as it relates to us. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know, but I don't think that's right. But anyway, that sort of started my quest in the back of my mind. So the school year went on. Second semester comes up, and I am on Facebook, and I see an announcement for a lecture on the history of African Americans in Ypsilanti. I'm going, hell by Matt Sidfried. We go down to the library, I'm listening to him lecture, I'm seeing the slides, the pictures, and I am so blown away. I'm just astonished by how much history and culture is here that my students didn't know about and maybe some of their parents didn't know about. Or if they knew, they didn't know very much. So at the lecture, Matt said he also does a walking tour to kind of go along with the slide presentation. So I signed up to go to the walking tour. Then somebody in the group that I'm with brings up the point, so what are you going to do with all this history? What is your plan to do with this? Asking Matt for this. And he said, you know, I really would just like to see some murals. And I'm like, I'm an art teacher. <laughs> and so then another gentleman says, well, you know, if you two ever decide to come together and do this, I'll help you, a retired teacher from Lincoln, um, Jeff said, I'll help you. And we got together, and we did meetings all summer long. We called in the community. Um, during the school year, one, our, my, my co-worker, a Spanish teacher, came to me and said, he says, you know, I have this friend of mine who's this terrific artist, works good with kids, he's come to my class and done things, and handed me Doug Jones's business card. I called up Doug, I said, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get these kids back connected with their community, with their history, with their culture. Um, he said, we can do this. Doug had his drawing and sketching in the classroom. I told him about the project. Hands went up, they wanted to be a part of it. We went on the tours with Matthew, talked about all of that. Then we had to decide on what is the first mural going to be about. Matthew said, this is a community that's been going through a lot. This is a community of young people that feel sort of disconnected from this community of adults. There's a man, a, histor a historical figure named H.P. Jacobs. They need to know who he is. We believe that this man will give them motivation and understand that they can do something else with their lives. And whatever has been said to them out there in the community and in the newspaper that is negative, this is a man that went against all the odds against him and became somebody that we all are going to end up remembering. Also with Matt and I planned together on several field trips. So these are some of the, this is one of the, I won't show you the whole thing, but this is one of the field trips. H.P. Jacobs um, is perhaps the most important man, uh, person, man or woman, who ever lived in Ypsilanti, and he's unknown, and he's unknown for a couple of different reasons. Uh, he was born in bondage in St. Clair, Alabama, about 1825. Uh, he was too uh, small to work in the fields, they said, so he was uh, charged with uh, helping the elderly, perhaps um, insane, uh, patriarch of the family. During that process, he learned how to read or write, and write, which was illegal. He um, forged his freedom papers. He stole his master's cart and horses and escaped with his wife and children and his uh, brothers-in-law. And he came uh, on his way to Canada. He went to Canada 
1856, he was baptized in the Detroit River and shed his slave name of Samuel Hawkins, and he took the name H.P. Jacobs, and Jacobs is his wife's name. He ended up coming to Ypsilanti before the Civil War, and he was the janitor at this school, this university, it was the Michigan Normal College. Uh, while he was in Ypsilanti, he founded Second Baptist Church, which is still here in Ypsilanti, and founded the first African school for African American children because African Americans could go to school in Ypsilanti, they just had to sit at the back of the schoolhouse. So H.P. Jacobs and African American parents said, we are not gonna allow our children to be humiliated like that, we want a safe place for them to learn. So the first African American schoolhouse was opened here. Um, he, uh, enrolled his daughters, while he's the janitor here, he enrolled his daughters in the music college. Right after the Civil War, he and his young daughters, who were in their early teens, and his wife and family, go down to Natchez, Mississippi, to open a school for recently freed uh, people from bondage. And that school is now known as Jackson State University. So the founder of Jackson State University was the uh, janitor here at Eastern Michigan University, which is a big challenge, I think, to all of us. He's a leading figure in Mississippi politics during Reconstruction, and I think that word Reconstruction is why we don't know about him anymore. Uh, and then you notice here, at the end of his life, at the age of 65, he got his medical degree from a doctor. So, and he, and by the way, his family comes back to Ypsilanti, and he's always coming back to Ypsilanti, back and forth to Ypsilanti. He's perhaps the most talked about African-American man of the 19th century in Ypsilanti, and unknown today, unknown today. This person who went from bondage to janitor to state senator in less than 10 years is unknown today. We don't know H.P. Jacobs. Who, does anybody know, has heard of Elijah McCoy here in Ypsilanti? Elijah McCoy is the most famous black man to come from Ypsilanti. He was an um, uh, inventor of patents and all of this kind of stuff. Well, H. P., uh, Elijah McCoy is famous because he was a black man who made it in a white world. And H.P. Jacobs is a black man who created entire black worlds, churches schools, universities, institutions. These aren't going to be celebrated by societies still engulfed by white supremacy. They're not going to be celebrated. What's going to be celebrated is the black people who made it in the white world. And this is to take nothing away from the accomplishments of Elijah McCoy, but it is the filter how we remember things. It is the filter of how we remember things. So H.P. Jacobs is an incredibly profound, powerful, person and a symbol and a challenge. And to me, his greatest challenge is how many people who are currently janitors in places like Eastern Michigan should be leading Eastern Michigan University instead of mopping the floors of Eastern Michigan University. That's really the challenge of H.P. Jacobs. And we wanted his eyes, you know, on that mural to challenge everybody walking by it. Not just look at me, what I accomplished, you better accomplish something too, but What's inside of you? What's inside of this community? That's the challenge of H.P. Jacobs. This is actually a really important part of this whole project and this whole story is where this mural is. And what you're looking at is the side of it. And this nondescript building uh, is actually the last building left from the old African American business district raised in urban renewal on Harriet Street. So Harriet Street, where this was. This is the old Bebop record shop from the 50s and 60s, believe it or not. And Curry has been in here as a barber. What's that? My cousin's a Curry. Your cousin's a Curry. He's been a barber since 63, 64, and he still has the photos inside. If you look, like the, the cuts, like you could choose your cut from 1964. That picture's still on the wall. Um, Wait, so every, everybody should go visit this. Everybody is <laughs> like walking into a museum of yeah. an Ypsilanti Black Barber Shop okay, that's still active. And you know, we would go there on Sunday mornings and they would still be cleaning up from the card game that, that at night. So, but everybody in this neighborhood has a story about her. Everybody has got their hair cut at Curry's. Everybody knows Ed Curry. He's called the mayor of Southside Ypsilanti. He's been in that building forever. So what we were saying by this building, you know, which most people, this isn't a historic building, it's a cinder block building, like this, but this is the most historic building on that street in many ways. And we were validating that history by placing the H.P. Jacobs mural on it. We were saying this building is important, we don't care if it's cinder block, we don't care if it doesn't meet architectural standards of the historic part. It is important to this community, and this H.P. Jacobs mural says this building is important. Right. And also the building says the mural is important. Next, we're going to talk to Doug, and he's going to introduce some of the students and how they interpreted H.P. I am originally from Jackson. 
my history is in psychology or my professional experience is in psychology um, and education. Um, I have worked for a long time to uh, develop projects that are inclusive of our entire student bodies. So I've done so in Michigan, um, also on the East Coast, also on the West Coast. Um, and so that really is the foundation of a lot of my community work. In 2014, I developed a technique that incorporates students of all ages, experience levels, backgrounds, um, to reconstruct a portion of the famous Rivera murals. Um, so my story with Ypsilanti start, sort of begins when I was a college student and I was daydreaming about um, the effect that maybe I could have on the community. One of my roommates became a teacher, one of the colleagues of Lynn. So, um, back in the college days and after college, my first project was to travel the country and uh, do graffiti, you know, what a lot of aspiring artists do. So, whenever I'd go to a new city, I would paint a huge Wonder Woman. <clears throat> and these would be ethnically different Wonder Women. <clears throat> so the idea behind this was empowerment and again, inclusion and a greater discussion. Um, Jesse is his name, <clears throat> the teacher at YCS, invited me to sort of speak as a symbol of art um, to course students at Ipsy. Um, and he used pretty uh, strong words like resegregation, um, like the, um, how can I say, the deconstruction of a positive uh, <clears throat> image of youth in Ypsilanti. Um, and so he had invited me for years to come and speak to his class. I used the DIA's Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera exhibit as sort of a platform for me to come speak. So I brought in my pixel project into his Spanish classes. His students reconstructed this beautiful image of Frida Kahlo. <clears throat> I got to teach them about diversity in Michigan, about Mexican muralists, about the uh, life of Frida. <clears throat> um, in time for them to visit the DIA as part of a field trip um, to see this exhibit. That's when I was introduced to Lynn Settles. Okay, so again, the foundation for my work is inclusion. Okay, we let a lot of students slip by. Um, and I think the question uh, that arises from what Matt just shared with us is really a story of this. You know, why is it that some are janitors and some are PhDs? Why is it that some people are considered superior and some people are considered inferior? Why is it that some people are permitted uh, the privilege of reading and writing while others are not? Why is it that some people are valued for their creativity um, and their uh, problem-solving abilities while other people are not? Um, so as you can imagine, the foundation for my work really found a great home in this project. Doug has been a Jackson-based artist. How can I, my thing is, how can the kids had met Matthew? How can I get them to meet Doug? They're in school this certain time period. He's doing something else, and then he's doing something else. But I wanted them to meet him. I didn't want him to just show up at the site and they both go, oh, that's you. And then, you know. So I wanted them to get a chance to meet him. So Douglas created this video to introduce himself to the school. Hi, my name is Doug Jones. I'm an artist originally from Jackson, Michigan. That's where we're at right now. I'm standing outside of the Martin Luther King Jr. Center. I grew up a couple blocks away from here. Well, the, the process for this is that they came up with concepts. They developed conceptual drawings and sketches that have been submitted to me. I'm turning this into an original painting. Then I'm going to take a photo of this painting. I'm going to make it digital. And then there are things that I have to do to it. And then this is returned to the students as a project that they, while the the progression technique was about line and form. This technique is about color. And so they're going to apply color, um, and it's going to be you know, even brighter. But then I take these pieces back together, and it will recreate that original painting that I do based off of their sketches in a pointillist tradition. OK. Yeah, it's, it's going to be beautiful. With that, I want some of the students to explain sort of what the process was like for you. Mm -hmm. As far as like the overall experience, uh, I feel like it was like really good for me because um, like me being an artist that I am, it gave me like a another another field to like explore into because I had never done nothing like that, like like a mirror or anything like that, um, and it kind of like helped me to 
uh, express myself and like leave my mark on the Egyptian language, so to say. Um, because like, you know, I just I just felt like when we started this that I want to you know be part where it's like if I go up to college somewhere and I come back or when I'm grown I come back just to visit or something like that. Like I can see like well you know uh, you know I did this back when I was twelve or something like that. Or I can bring my children or something like that. You know, see you know this is what I left in my community and stuff like that. Um, and also like being like. I'm an artist, like, of perfection, so I try to get everything perfect. Um, he also taught, taught me how to, like, humble myself in that area um, to realize, like, if you mess up, it's not so much as, like, a, a, a follow-up. It's more like another block to step one. Um, so, like, help me grow in, like, my areas of art and everything. Um, and it, it was a really, really good experience. I'm a senior at MC High School. My personal experience during like doing the mural was fun, I guess. I guess it was fun because I got to do it with my friends, my best friend Cameron back there. And Miss Settles let us bring different people. So one day I was like bring my sister, I bring my other best friend, you know, try to get my cousins to come and help us do the mural. So I think it was pretty fun. And then I got to learn about A.C. Jacobs, which I personally did not know who that was at all. So when Matt came to our class, he was talking to us about who he was. It was really interesting to me. When we worked on the mural, reading Dove was fun. It was really fun, cause like, he let us do anything that we wanted to do. Like, we would go up there, put handprints on the wall. He'd be like, oh, that's so cute. And then we'd like, write our names on there. And everything that we did, he was just like, Oh, that's cute. Can you just like put colors there so that you just splash color over there? Like it was just really fun. Like some days I'll have practice. Me and my teammates will go after practice because we just really wanted to go out and do it. And one time we were painting and it was some community members just walking by. They were just like so amazed to see what we were doing. And it just made me feel like, oh, maybe the community will think different of us now that we're out in the community and we're helping out. So yeah, I just had fun. experienced them so it's not really like a, more like a doubt it's more of like okay I got this you had also confidence to talk more confident. At first I was really just looking for something to pass the time and then I got interested and I got like it's just like everything that we do like no matter what background you come from you can still do something big and beautiful and it just makes you like happy to be part of IPSI and that you, it's just a way to like show that 
you know, I'm proud to be where I'm, like, where I'm from and that nothing can take this away from me. Art, just, just the fact that it brings people together. It's all about togetherness. It wants to, there's togetherness, there's power, and once there's power, there's change. And there's, there's change, there's evolution, it just keeps going.